Cornell University President Martha Pollock is ending her seven-year tenure as the head of the Ivy League school in upstate Ithaca, following months of turmoil including demonstrations and threats to Jewish students. The 65-year-old insisted that her departure, effective June 30, is unrelated to the anti-Israel protests and brazen displays of anti-Semitism, insisting that she considered announcing her retirement in the fall and winter. I had to pause because of events on our and or on other campuses, Pollock said in her resignation statement released Thursday. I understand that there will be lots of speculation about my decision, so let me be as clear as I can. This decision is mine and mine alone. Cornell Provost Michael Kotlikoff will serve as interim president beginning July 1st. In the most egregious incident, a Cornell University engineering student was arrested for threatening to kill Jews on campus last October. Patrick Dye pleaded guilty last month to posting threatening messages to the Cornell section of an online discussion forum. In another disturbing incident, a controversial Cornell University history professor, Russell Rickford, described Hamas' October 7th terrorist attack on Israel as exhilarating and energizing. The mishandling of claims of anti-Semitism triggered the ouster of the presidents of the University of Pennsylvania and Harvard, and now the head of New York's other Ivy League school, Minu Shafik of Columbia University in Manhattan, is on the heat seat over campus rioting. One of Pollock's campus critics greeted her announced departure with a good riddance. Cornell has been a campus in turmoil, seemingly rudderless in the face of growing anti-Semitism fed by hyper-aggressive anti-Israel activism, including an encampment that remains in the main quad, said Cornell Law School professor William Jacobson, founder of the right-leaning EqualProtect.org. The board also needs to introduce diversity of viewpoint among the faculty, which has become a monoculture and echo chamber of far-left ideology, with almost no dissenting voices left, he said. Pollock said Cornell, like the rest of society, over the past few years had to confront the COVID-19 pandemic, George Floyd protests, and a terrorist attack and subsequent war that has reverberated across our country and especially across higher education. The latter has raised a number of critical issues that we are all grappling with, from anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, and other forms of bigotry, to free expression, academic freedom, and how to foster a diverse, equitable, and inclusive community," she said in her statement. I suspect many of these issues are going to be with us for years to come. She defended her handling of the divisive protests and threats and said Cornell has a solid foundation to improve upon. We have worked hard to uphold our commitment both to free expression and to being a community of belonging where everyone is welcome and safe. We have been vigilant in working to ensure the safety and well-being of all members of our community from all backgrounds, work I've been dedicated to long before the events of the past year," she said. Advertisement this material may not be published, broadcast, rewritten, or redistributed. See 2024 Fox News Network, LLC. All rights reserved. Quotes displayed in real time or delayed by at least 15 minutes. Market data provided by FactSet. Powered and implemented by FactSet Digital Solutions. Legal Statement. Mutual fund and ETF data provided by Refinitiv Lipper. Cornell President Martha Pollock announced her upcoming June 30th retirement after facing calls for resignation earlier this year. The university is one of countless campuses nationwide where anti-Israel protests have resulted in student encampments and suspensions. More than 2,600 arrests have been made at anti-Israel demonstrations on college campuses across the nation. Anti-Israel agitators have set up encampments disrupted university operations, and demanded their schools fully divest from Israel at more than 50 campuses. The protest movement has spread to Europe, where riot police confronted protesters at the University of Amsterdam. British PM Rishi Sunak is also calling for an end to anti-Semitic abuse at UK universities. Fast, 24-7 alerts delivered to your inbox daily. Subscribe to be in the know of the most important moments around the world. By subscribing, you agree to our privacy policy. Incoming update. Just six of the 33 people arrested at George Washington University in Washington, D.C. earlier this week were students, Fox News has learned. The GW Hatchet Campus newspaper originally reported that 33 arrests were made Wednesday in order to clear the unlawful anti-Israel encampment and defacing of a George Washington statue in University Yard. 
The large percentage of arrests at GWU representing non-students follows a trend of many anti-Israel protesters not being affiliated with colleges. The NYPD reported that nearly half of their 282 arrests from the past week were not affiliated with either Columbia or City College. Fox News Digital has reached out to George Washington University for comment. Six student organizers have been placed on mandatory leaves of absence after participating in 15 days of an unlawful Gaza solidarity encampment, according to the Daily Pennsylvania. The six students received letters from Vice Provost for University Life notifying them of the disciplinary action, citing Section 3.D of the Charter of the University of Pennsylvania Student Disciplinary System. According to the Daily Pennsylvanian, the letters also cited Threat ES to order and safety and increasingly unsafe conditions as reasoning for the mandatory leaves. One of the student protesters allegedly had her campus ID card deactivated and could not access her dorm room for the Philadelphia Inquirer. The UPenn University Handbook states that leaves of absence are enforced when there are extraordinary circumstances. Fox News Digital has reached out to the University of Pennsylvania's Office of Communications for comment. New York Governor Kathy Hochul, Center, joins Cornell University President Martha Pollack, Left, for a visit with students at the Center for Jewish Living at Cornell in Ithaca, New York, on October 30, 2023. On Thursday, Pollock announced her retirement from her post at the university. Lindsay France slash Cornell University, Ithaca, New York-based Cornell University's president, Martha E. Pollock, announced on Thursday that she will retire on June 30, as the campus grapples with anti-Israel protests, much like schools across the nation. Cornell University Board of Trustees Craig H. Kaiser said in a prepared statement that Provost Michael I. Kotlikoff will step in as interim president starting on July 1st, at which time Pollock will be given the title of President Emerita by the Cornell Board of Trustees. She will serve in the role for two years, as a search committee looks for the 15th president within six to nine months of the end of Kotlikoff's term. Serving as the president of Cornell has been an amazing privilege. There are few roles that afford so much opportunity to make a positive difference in the world, Pollock wrote in a statement announcing her departure. After seven fruits.